In my last video, I discussed the possible advantages and merits of interval endurance training. Uh, just to uh, recap, uh, interval training involves alternating periods of very high intensity uh, along with uh, periods of, of lower intensity. You go back and forth uh, depending on your uh, existing endurance uh, and, and state of health. You know, you could do this as many as eight times within, let's say, a third, 20 to 30 minute period. Uh, again, the advantages, uh, advantages of interval tra training are that, or high, I should call it high intensity interval training, or HIT. The advantages are that you, you, you can get the same benefits uh, with much shorter workouts compared to conventional aerobic training. Conventional aerobic training takes a lot longer. Conventional aerobic training involves doing your aerobic workouts at, at one steady uh, level of intensity, usually related to your maximum heart rate. Uh, that would be anywhere from 60 to uh, up to maybe 75% of maximum heart rate. That would be, uh, you know, th that's what you keep it, that's what your heart rate stays in with conventional aerobic training. With uh, interval training, it goes up and down. It can go as high as 90% or over of maximum uh, heart rate. And it, can, and it drops down to, uh, you know, in your low level, as little as 60, 50 to 60%. So, you know, you got go back and forth. Uh, one of the main differences, as I pointed out in that video, one of the di main differences with uh, HIIT training is that it involves both the slow twitch and muscle fibers, or co also called type 1 fibers, and it involves the type 2 fibers. Now, the type 2 fibers, or fast twitch muscles, uh, f muscle fibers, those are the fibers that you usually train when you do weight training. Uh, those are the fibers, the type 2 B fibers are the fibers most amenable to muscle hypertrophy or growth. And interval training can actually affect uh, fa the fast twitch fibers, although usually it'll, it'll affect what they call the fast twitch type A fibers, which is a kind of intermediary fire fiber between slow and fast twitch. Um, you know, the only really way to get the deep fast twitch fibers is to use either heavier weight when you're working out or to uh, go to complete uh, muscular failure with lighter weight. A little bit difficult to hit those kind of fibers when you're doing any kind of aerobics because you just don't have the resistance. Uh, so, uh, but still, the, uh, you know, the fact that you're hitting two types of fibers makes a big difference. And because of this, there are certain nutritional measures that you can take that might make your high intensity interval training a little bit more effective. Now, the one thing about uh, the fact that high-intensity uh, high, high interval training affects the fast-twitch fibers means that you get a faster and greater reduction of muscle glycogen. Glycogen is a carbohydrate that's stored in muscle. And when you do a high-intensity workout, whether it's weight training or high-intensity aerobics, uh, high-intensity interval aerobics, you're going to burn glycogen more rapidly. Uh, this is this is actually very good because um, when your glycogen levels aren't completely filled in the muscles in the liver, that means that the carbohydrate that you consume will first be used to replenish any depleted glycogen stores, especially in the muscles in the liver. Well, that's what that's what glycogen stored in those two tissues. But by doing so, there's far less chance of the carbohydrates being stored as fat. In other words, as long as your glycogen stores are not completely filled, carbohydrates will first be used to replenish depleted any any depleted glycogen stores you have in, in, in either the liver or the muscles. Uh, a lot of uh, articles when they talk about nutrition for high intensity interval training, they recommend that uh, because of the fact that you're burning glycogen at a faster rate, they recommend that you take in a higher amount of carbohydrates, uh, as much as 60% of your daily caloric intake. Uh, I don't really agree with that because uh, most people do high intensity interval training for two purposes. One is to incre uh, in to uh, promote fat oxidation or fat burning or fat loss. The second reason is to increase exercise endurance. If you do your high intensity interval aerobic training with a state of uh, starting out with let's say fairly low glycogen stores, this tends to stimulate structures in your cells called mitochondria. Uh, the mitochondria are the uh, site of fat oxidation and energy production. 
So if you actually do your high interval, uh, I'm, I'm just going to call it HIT. If you do your HIT training uh, under, let's say, fairly low glycogen conditions, you will actually wind up getting more endurance than if you have the carbohydrate before. Uh, now, of course, if you're involved in sporting activity or something that, you know, like let's say long distance running or something that takes over an hour, then you should have carbohydrates. But, you know, considering that HIIT training usually involves shorter workouts, uh, as you know, as little as anywhere from 10 to maybe 20 minutes up to 30 minutes, I, I think it's pointless to concentrate on carbohydrates uh, as a means of promoting, let's say, uh, greater efficiency in, during high-intensity in, high interval training. But there are some nutrients uh, that actually could make it a little bit easier and more efficient. Uh, and, uh, and that's what I'm going to talk about here. Uh, one of the nutrients that you want to consider is actually, believe it or not, is, is creatine. Why creatine? Now, now, creatine, in the studies of creatine, they've showed that it's, it's actually best used for high intensity exercise, high intensity short uh, rest in, uh, exercises, like for example weight training, you know, where you do a set, you do a short rest, you do another set. Creatine works best under those conditions. What the studies have found is like for, for endurance exercises or aerobics, creatine is much less efficient, but creatine, there is a difference. Creatine can actually be useful if you're doing high intensity interval training because of the fact that you're employing those fast twitch fibers and uh, the creatine will act as a buffer and prevent the, uh, the uh, increased acid, help prevent the increased acidity that occurs when you're burning uh, uh, glycogen or, or glucose. So the creatine theoretically uh, will make the high intensity interval training a little bit easier. Uh, you don't have to do anything special with the creatine. You could take one teaspoon a day, which is five grams. By the end of 30 days, your muscles will be low to the creatine. You don't have to do any creatine load for this purpose. So that's the first supplement is creatine. The second sub, uh, supplement I, I recommend definitely would be caffeine. Caffeine uh, is uh, it's kind of debatable, but basically caffeine helps you mobilize fat during exercise. So, of course, since uh, any type of aerobics uh, utilizes more fat uh, you know, as a source of energy compared to weight training, Anything that's going to help you mobilize fat, such as caffeine, is very useful. Caffeine also provides anti-fatigue properties. It inhibits a substance called adenosine, which makes you feel tired. Uh, and caffeine, again, will make any type of uh, high-intensity training, including interval training, feel a lot easier. Uh, you want to take in about uh, three, to six, uh, uh, three to six grams of, of uh, caffeine per kilogram of body weight. This comes out to about equivalent to about maybe three or four cups of coffee if you're about 200 pounds. You take it about 45 minutes to an hour before you work out, whether it's weight training or high intensity interval training. It'll make the exercise seem a lot easier. Uh, I wouldn't go with more caffeine than that. You don't want to go crazy because um, adenosine, one of the little known properties of adenosine is that it, it kind of dilates coronary arteries. So, you know, if you take too much caffeine before you do uh, aerobics, any kind of aerobics, you can actually be putting a strain on your heart because you're preventing the full dilation of the coronary arteries, which deliver oxygen to the heart. So if you keep it within, let's say, about three milligrams, did I say, I meant, I meant three milligrams per kilogram, not ki grams, three milligrams per kilogram of uh, body weight of, uh, of, the, cafe of the caffeine, uh, then uh, that should be enough and it should be a safe amount. Uh, another possible uh, useful ergogenic aid for high-intensity interval training is sodium bicarbonate, better known as baking soda. Uh, this is uh, probably best used if you're going to do the really high-intensity uh, interval training, like I mentioned, um, uh, you know, where you're, doing, where you're bringing your heart rate really high. Otherwise, I think it's kind of superfluous. Uh, the, the proper dose of uh, sodium bicarbonate is 0 0.3 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. You take that about anywhere between an hour to 90 minutes before you do your uh, uh, HIIT training. And you make sure you drink a lot of water because sodium bicarbonate is kind of high in sodium. And some people can get gastrointestinal side effects uh, if you take the baking soda or sodium bicarbonate. I, I'd experiment with that. 
uh, it is really a great combo though when you take it with when you take it with uh, caffeine creatine and, and beta alanine it's a tremendous pre-workout uh, fatigue reliever you know but you have to see if you can tolerate a lot of people just can't tolerate the uh, sodium bicarb and of course the last supplement I'd recommend to for uh, high intensity interval training is beta alanine beta alanine works by uh, combining with amino acid called histi histidine and uh, and together when histidine is bonded to beta alanine you have a dipeptide called carnosine carnosine is uh, is a intramuscular buffer it soaks up the acid that uh, that leads to exercise fatigue as a consequence beta alanine would probably also be a good ergogenic aid if you're doing a uh, high intensity interval training it'll make the exercise seem a lot easier um, you know uh, I, the proper dose is uh, is anywhere from three to six grams a day. You want to take it in small doses of maybe at, at mo no more than one to two gra 1.2 grams, 800 to 1.2 grams at, at each dose, because it can it can produce uh, larger doses can produce a tingling effect in the skin that uh, paresthesia it's called, and some people find it very uncomfortable, but it's not dangerous. It's just a little uncomfortable. Uh, so that's uh, beta alanine. So those are the main supplements I'd recommend uh, if you want to make your uh, high intensity interval training seem a little bit easier. Uh, and the, the one other possible supplement I would also recommend is beet juice. Uh, and beet juice you would take about eight ounces, two and a half hours before you do your high intensity inter uh, interval training. The reason I suggest beet juice is because the beet juice will raise your nitric oxide level. Uh, the nitric oxide dilates your your uh, blood vessels, increases oxygen delivery to the working muscles, and and uh, it, it, studies have shown you you know drinking beet juice two and a half hours before a workout can increase workout intensity as much as 26 percent, and it would be especially useful if you're doing high intensity interval training. So that's about it for nutritional supplements that will help make your high intensity interval training a lot easier. Uh, it'll, you know, it, it'll just take a lot of the stress off um, your muscles, but you'll still get all the benefits of high-intensity interval training. Uh, if you want more information on nutrition, exercise science, ergogenic aids, hormonal therapy, fat loss techniques that work, anti-aging therapies, uh, subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter www.appliedmetabolics.com best information anywhere you won't find anything superior to it on the on the uh, web there's no blogs there's no websites no magazines can match what I write in my applied metabolics newsletter where I incorporate my 55 years of constant study and, and personal experience into every issue no matter how, how smart you are or how much education you have you will learn something by reading every issue of my applied metabolics newsletter among the topics I'll be writing about uh, in, in a coming issue are all the training techniques known to boost muscle hypertrophy or growth. This is, this is based on my many years of experience, many years of interviewing countless top bodybuilders, and based on the existing science, I'm going to show you every training technique that will boost muscle size, muscle hypertrophy, without using any anabolic steroids. It's all going to be in this one article. It's only going to be in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. The greatest animals on earth. Uh, I, what can I say? I mean, I have my one dog, Bruno, now, and uh, I, I just love my dogs. I, I, I get some of my best ideas when I'm out walking the dogs. So it also gives me a break, you know, and, and uh, they, they're great. Go to your shelter, adopt a dog. Take care.